Hi everybody, I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us with this beautiful morning here. And we hope that you are doing well. We hope you are blessed. Our family is your family. We are the family who believes that the laws, statutes, and commandments of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy take the test of all time and have stood the test of all time. They have been there since the beginning. Our creator provided these for us 2,000 years before creation was ever created. And we are told we need to observe them. We are told we need to walk in them. And we are told that our creator will love us and that he will take care of us and that he will be our Elohim and we will be his people if we will do that. And that is what we are doing. And so we are reading some extracurricular books just today. And the book that we began yesterday was the book of the Nazarene. And for those who did not get into that, um, you could definitely take a look at that. Um, we will get a playlist as well for all of these so you guys can get with this. But this is a very, very good reading. Are you guys ready? Yep. yep. Gentlemen. Okay. Chapter two. When Yochanan had grown to manhood, he reappeared in the wilderness of Beth Emma. Beth, how do you guys say that? Beth Emma. Beth Emma. Proclaiming, change your ways, for you have fallen into error and ignorance. Return to the teachings of the Torah interpreting them without guile, and turn your eyes towards the new light of the coming day. For one comes who will be the promised instructor in goodness to establish the government of Elohim. Then the people said among themselves, Surely this is he of whom it is written, The voice of a herald will cry out from the wilderness, Make a highway for Yahuwah. Let the swift rivers be bridged and the high mountains passed and the rough places made smooth. For the impassable places will be crossed and the wilderness made to flourish. Some came to Yochanan from the place of his upbringing, who said, Withdraw from the people, for they are no concern of yours. In good time, preach purification of the Ruach and suppression of passion. But meanwhile, you are too inexperienced. Yochanan said, Worthy teachers, you dress in white, proclaiming your purity, yet fear to be put to this test, to the test. Is your flesh so weak that it must be kept continually under restraint? Is it imprisoned, malefactor, good by his own desire or by his circumstances? Is not the world a place of temptation so that each may discover his own strength or weakness? Untested, you can know neither and must always remain in a state of doubt. Okay, these are, these are um, you know, these are hardcore words, right? What do you guys make of this right here? Because these are things that we have kind of heard, but not quite to this degree, right? We have heard a little bit. When you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you get a little bit of John the Immerser, uh, Yochanan the Immerser, but you don't get it like this. Thoughts? Anyone? Um, so we know that the Pharisees hated him, but we know we never really heard of why. You know, we always thought maybe he's just judging them, or maybe he's like just like telling them to turn away from sin. But he's like he's giving them things why they might hate him. Yeah, and absolutely. Okay, and and it's, it's very interesting right here when he's talking about this. You know. Um, do you have to keep your flesh under restraint? Are you so scared? Essentially, are you scared of that you're not going to be able to pass this test? And then he goes, untested, you can know neither and must always remain in the state of doubt, right? And, and that's what we don't, a lot of us don't know. We don't know how deep our faith is until we have that testing. And only when we are test is, tested is when we will know. Five, the fire hidden in wood gives warmth only when released. It also provides light and is useful. But while hidden away, it is of little value. A tree left growing uncut falls and rots, serving no man. So too it is with knowledge and wisdom, for only when utilized can they have any value. Goodness is not assessed only by the things done, for the things left undone are not overlooked. Yochanan appears strange in the eyes of those who saw him, for he was a wild-haired and large, clothed in a garment of hair as were the prophets of old and bound with a leather girdle, like Elijah. His food was locusts and bread dipped in wild honey, for he was of the Zophim who watched for the coming of the kingdom. He came to bear witness to the light, which should shine in the hearts of all men. But the Yahudim would not heed him, for he used cleansing waters, which they did not. This, he said, signified the washing away of the causes of illusion and the impurities of life. He was a cleanser of minds and hearts. So this gives us a little bit of a uh, background into baptism, right? We had not... Until we had John the Immerser coming, people didn't get baptized like this. This was not a thing. And so he came and he's talking about baptism being a cleanser of the minds and hearts. And, and that's what the, uh, it basically washes away. The, it's the illusion and the impurities of life. So seven, 
There were mark mockers, but they were afraid to come near Yochanan. Yet many listened to the message and were cleansed in the river of life, providing they were wholehearted in a desire to change their ways. Yochanan knew some were hypocrites, and he held them long under the water, for he said they required a lot of purifying. Few men argued with Yochanan, though it is in the nature of, of Yahudim to argue. So some were dipped longer than others. It's not like you're trying to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, as a hypocrite, this guy should go under a little longer, huh? Blub, blub, blub. Okay, come on up. You're free. Now let's not do that again. This is how Yochanan testified when priests and learned men were sent to question him, saying, Who are you? He said, I am not the one you anticipate. Whose coming is at hand? Is it not written? I will send a forerunner to prepare the way. I am that herald. Soon the one you seek will hasten to acquire his kingdom. He will be like a refining fire, preparing you for participation. I am the one who verifies the prophets of old who said, Take heed, for the day comes which shall burn like a fire, with the self-satisfied and wrongdoers shall burn like stubble. So neither branch nor root of their wickedness shall be left. Then some who inquired of Yochanan said, If you are not the expected one, why do you baptize? He replied, I teach cleansing and water as a sign of repentance for the past and rebirth into another way of life. I herald the coming of someone much greater who is now born among you. He whose sandal bands I am unworthy to unlace. I use water, but he will immerse men in the Ruach and cleanse them with a discipline, disciplinary fire. He is the bearer of a winnowing fan and will thoroughly cleanse the threshing floor, gathering the wheat into the granary and burning the useless chaff. Then one said, no good thing ever came out of the wilderness. But Yochanan, overhearing him, said, Recall the days of our forefathers when the wandering in the wilderness was over, and they came to a land where there was an abundance of milk, butter, and cheese, where the sheep grew fat and corn grew plentifully, where the wine flourished, where the vine flourished, and all good things for nurture and comfort of man were found. Then the people became weak in body, slothful, their minds turning to unclean things. They forsook the ways of Yahuwah and had little respect for the teachings of the Torah. From which they did, did they derive the most benefit? From the wilderness or from the land overflowing with good things? Pity me not for my days in the wilderness, but pity yourselves who have been denied man-making experiences. Yochanan said, Woe to you who have taken to the keeping of many slaves, for you, having robbed the man with a small plot of ground of his livelihood, are worse than thieves. You roll your eyes upward, say, Never would I steal a loaf of bread, and condemn one who steals because of his emptiness. Your stomachs are full, but your hearts are empty of goodness. Take heed of my words, for surely if any man acts so, acts so, he brings another to wrongdoing. Even though the other be in a fair distant land, he shall not be blameless in the sight of Yahuwah. Hypocrites, you cast a piece of silver at the feet of a beggar sitting beside the temple and say, I have done good. But how small the goodness compared with the wickedness done to those unseen. What of the disinherited ones, victims of your avarice they have been driven from their homes and lie shivering in the coldness of the night no roof protecting them from the night dampness they huddle uncomfortably under the rocks for shelter aching stomachs denying them sleep they they rake the hard ground hot hot ground with bony fingers and knock coarse roots with teeth loosened in their gums their mouths are dry and sour and bitter satisfying leaves become an acceptable diet when they crave for the relief of bread driven desperate by mouth-watering smells carried on the air and steal some small thing. They are, they are harried by well-fed tyrants such as the slave owners among you. Take heed of this, for it is the Torah. If a hungry man steals because of the emptiness within his stomach, the crime is not with him, but with those whose hands hold the power. Okay, what do we know of this? How do we, how do we, how do we account for this? Because... Um, is there a Torah command that says you can steal for food? I mean, it says you go to the field and take what you want in the field. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, no, no. In in the proper land of Yisrael, there was a way that people would never be hungry. There was a, pay, a way that people would never ever be as broke as they are now because our Creator has has built a way for this where you're not supposed to, to harvest everything that you have at the end because it's supposed to be for the people that do not have food. So this is very interesting that that John says. That um, if a hungry man steals because of the emptiness within his stomach, the crime is not with him, but with those whose hands hold the power. That's, that's very interesting. 19. Those to whom Yochanan spoke said, tell us not of these things. 
For we have rulers. We give to the poor outside the temple, but if we gave to the multitude of the poor, we would only be added to their number. Tell us about the deliverer. So that's very interesting as well because, um, is anyone listening to this, by the yeah. way? Yeah. What did they just say? Basically, he said if we give to all the poor, if we go to the poor, we'll just be sitting next to him begging for money as well. We'll be as poor as well. Yeah, and that's an interesting way to look at things because our creator gives us everything, right? He, he allows us to have change in our pocket or he allows us to be broke. Okay, but the question, tell us about the deliverer. 20, Yochan said, from what do you expect the deliverer to save you? They said, it is written, he will deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Yochanan said, he will perform no mean task, but will save you from the greatest of enemies. Tell me, which, present, which presents the most danger? Those who lay siege to a fortress from outside or those within the gates, cunningly biding their time with concealed weapons? Surely it is the enemy within who is most to be feared. Therefore, I declare to you, the deliverer comes not to fight against the enemy, clamoring outside, for the silent unseen foe within is most to be feared. Many shook their heads and said quietly, this man is mad. Then, among, then one among those who listened said, if he tells of the ways of Elohim, surely these ways are strange. Yochanan overhearing this said, the ant cannot understand the ways of an eagle, nor the eagle the ways of a man. How much less can man understand the ways of Yahuwah? One standing close to Yochanan said, if a man is ruled by two kings, what should he obey? the one who is close or the one who is far distant. Yochanan said, If I answered you straightly, would you follow my advice? The man replied, Surely, for I am perplexed and would hear your words. Yochanan said, Obey the rule of the king closest to you, he who reigns in your heart. Now, Yochanan testified concerning Yahushua in this, in this manner. There are the things written in the holy books about he who will come. Then shall Yahuwah raise up a new high priest like no other before him. And he will reveal Elohim in a new light to the understanding of men. To the understanding of men. He will set the feet on, of men on the path of rightful judgment. He shall shine forth as the sun over the earth, removing all darkness from it, and will arm men with the sword which brings everlasting peace. His star will shine above like that of a king. It's like kindling the lamp of knowledge, enlightening men as the sun lightens the day. He will proclaim the kingdom wherein the sword will be drawn against the wrongdoers and the injustices of the poor will be readdressed. No, redressed, not readdressed. Then shall arise Mashiach from among you who will deliver you from your enemies. Yochanan also said, Already the axe is laid at the root of the trees, for it is not prophesied, for was it not prophesied that every tree bearing sour fruit will be hewn down and burned? Therefore do not be fuel for the fire, but produce the good fruits of repentance wherein lie the seeds of your salvation. The day is not far distant when each shall be called to an accounting, some enjoying the fruits of their labor and rising into glory while others go down into darkness and shame. There was a time when many temple worshipers came to gain rebirth through the cleansing waters. And Yochanan said to some self-righteous ones among them, children of the viper's brood, what has caused you to seek escape from the fate in store for you? Produce deeds consistent with repentance and console yourself no longer by saying, we are of the seed of Abraham. I say, being of the seed of Abraham serves you no better than being one of those stones. When the people said, tell us what we should do. Yochanan replied, no man wears two coats. So let the man who has two share with the man who has none. Whoever has a store of food beyond his needs, let him do what likewise. A tax gatherer asked him, what shall I do? Yochanan answered, exact nothing above the amount fixed for collection and never exploit the defenseless and unlearned. Some soldiers asked him what they should do. Yochanan said, never be unnecessarily cruel or threaten to bring false charges and make sure you always live within your earnings as soldiers. Then a captain said, what shall I do? Who must enforce commands? Yochanan replied, make sure the commands are just and do not extend beyond the need of the circumstances. A man of priestly rank said to Yochanan, why do you not offer incense and sacrifice? Yochanan answered, Such things are not fitting for the Most High Elohim, who is already full with all things and lacks nothing. Therefore, honor him by giving thanks for his benefits and let your service be dedication to his service. <clears throat> okay, what does he mean there? Let your, let your, oh, excuse me, and actually, let your only sacrifice be dedication to his service. Okay, what is what is he talking about with this, and and why? I mean, he's he's not he's not a priest. He can't do sacrifices, so 
He's like, basically, give thanks to Yahuwah. Yahuwah doesn't need sacrifice. He'd rather have thanks. Yeah, he'd rather have obedience, not just thanks. I think he, um, Yahuwah would rather have obedience, right? Of course, he wants thanks. But the first and foremost thing of everybody, including parents, is obedience from children, right? When you don't obey your parents, it breaks the house. When you don't obey Yah, it breaks your house. Okay, where are we at? 36. A priest among the crowd said to Yochanan, do you say the Elohim of our fathers is not a great Elohim? Yochanan replied, You know his requirements, and whether these be worthy of a great or small Elohim? Then some cried out, Pity him, for he is only, ha only a waif of the wilderness, having neither father nor mother. Yochanan answered, have I, said, have I not said, Pity me not, for the wilderness was a goodly father, making me strong and hardy? Can I not outrun the gazelle and lift a great stone? No sickness eats my body, and I can bite through a halter line? What of these people fattened at the tables of their fathers, like geese prepared for the banquet? They say, we are, of, we are the light of the land, but I tell you, they are, they are an unprofitable burden. They say, give us white water to quench the fire in our stomachs, when every day they kindle the fire anew through their mouths, for things that pass pleasantly through the mouth often stir up strife in the belly. Yochanan was the beacon of light, the herald of the deliverer, coming to purge the world of wrongdoings by enlightening men, showing what was right and what was wrong. For though men had the light of the Torah, many saw it only dimly or with a distortion, while many interpreted the Torah to make it accord with their convenience. The true deliverer was one who would deliver men from themselves, exposing their weaknesses failings and hypocrisies only that they might benefit the purpose and intent being wholly good all right um this is probably why this was ripped out of the scriptures to begin with right because you can't explain this to people that oh you need to keep the torah nobody wants to hear this nobody wants to keep the laws of, of our of the most high everybody thinks that they're just really too good to be doing this um but it's very, very clear in everything that we have ever read from the front of the book to all the extracurricular books that everything depends upon your obedience to the Most High. Okay, 41. Glory to the supreme Elohim reigning in the heavens above all. May peace and plenty fill the earth and goodwill extend to all creation. May suffering, turmoil, and disaster quickly serve their purpose through the cooperation and understanding of man so that they may pass away as things no longer necessary for his upbringing. Blessed be those who preserve these words and may those who alter them suffer for what they do. The world is glorified through men whose lives are governed by dedication and duty, who completely devote themselves to carrying out the purpose ordained by Yahuwah, using earthly conditions to this end. The desires and longings of the heart, the hopes and aspirations of men will never go unfulfilled or be ignored by Elohim, while men are willing to rise to greatness through selfish sacrifices and devotions to duty. The highest duty to, to which anyone can be called is service and suffering is the cause of Yahuwah. Okay, so what would the cause of Yahuwah be? If you don't keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator... Then you can't serve him. Yeah, you can't serve him. That's his cause. His cause is a set of guidelines. His cause is that I have created you... And I would like you to live this way because I have created a great road forward and you can either be obedient and you can follow it or you can be disobedient and live as the world and see what happens to the end. And that is a deadly combo because at the end, you're not going to be able to fix anything. It's over. So this is the time that we have right now. This is the resume that we have right now to get fixed, that we need to get our lives together, that we need to get this Torah under control for us, that for our family, that we are under the laws. We are under the Mashiach and the ways of our Mashiach and the ways of our creator. So with that, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys will continue on. We'll be reading, continuing on tomorrow. It looks like this book goes on for quite a ways. So it's very interesting and we'll have a lot to discuss. So thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. All right, so. All right, so.